It's been six years since I first started experiencing kundalini movement in my body. It's been three years since I made this video about it. Today I want to revisit this video and give you updates. Let's talk about how the kundalini symptoms have changed over the past six years. What is called spontaneous kriyas. And this is movements of the body while you're meditating. So what would happen for me is I would just notice that my head was moving back and forth, my whole body wanted to rock, and the further and deeper I got into meditation, the more that this happened. I could create an entire YouTube channel on kriyas and spontaneous and involuntary movements that one has during during meditation and if you're on the spiritual path, you might have them in ordinary everyday life. These involuntary movements changed my life completely. I am not the same person that I was because of these spontaneous kriyas. Essentially, I've been able to allow these spontaneous kriyas to take over my life. They move me. I first realized that I was able to do this on a walking meditation. I was curious and I asked my legs if they could move me and to my amazement, they did. They walked me. My legs were completely moving on their own. I wasn't at all deciding to move them. And this evolved into being able to allow my legs to move me in the grocery store and to walk me to just the right dinner. And that has evolved into me allowing this energy to speak through me, to dance through me, to move me in all that I do. Even right now, as I'm making this video, it doesn't at all feel like there's a me in here speaking to you. It feels like this energy or spirit is moving through me and words are happening. All of life just feels so effortless. It just flows. And I truly can feel this energy flowing through me and flowing throughout my life. So spontaneous kriyas, yeah, they definitely still happen. And do I experience the actual movements during meditation? Only if it's a really powerful meditation. As a matter of fact, I know it's the right meditation that I should do every day for a time because I'll start to feel my body move. My head will nod, my hands will raise up, maybe I'll shake. And I watched a video that Joe Dispenza put out, Dr. Joe Dispenza, he's amazing. You should definitely check him out if you haven't already. But he made a video about brain scans of people who were in deep meditation on his retreats. Essentially, they look the same as people who are having full-blown seizures. Thought this was interesting. One of the first things I thought of was the spontaneous kriyas that happen in meditation and how some people shake and they have all of these involuntary movements, just like someone would during a seizure, sort of like a bliss seizure that only has benefits, no drawbacks. My sleep patterns changed a little bit. I started waking up really, really early in the morning, like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, this is pretty much still the same. I wake up super early. I wake up between the hours of 3.30 and 5 o'clock a.m. on most days. I'm not sure why. This seems to be an almost magical time. I do sleep well though, and I don't really feel like I need more rest than I get, so that's good. Another thing that I experienced a lot and still experience is this sensation of tingling on the skin and especially on my face and my scalp. I still experience tingling sensations on my skin, especially on my scalp. I feel the bug crawling sensations, especially when a meditation is really, really deep and I'm really feeling connected, but it's not as often and it's not as intense and it always feels blissful, almost orgasmic, like waves of orgasmic bliss sort of shimmering down from my crown and all the way down my body. Sudden waves of emotion or extremes of emotions really feeling like I was so angry or so happy or really sad and I didn't know why. Sometimes there was absolutely no reason whatsoever. I don't at all experience an emotional roller coaster anymore. Actually, I experience just the opposite. Even if things are going on that are really difficult that I would normally struggle with before this awakening, before I was a serious spiritual seeker. I just don't feel it anymore. I don't get triggered as often. If something really huge happens, 
I'm much more peaceful than I would have been three or four years ago. And certainly before I started experiencing this energy moving in my body. And I feel that some of this is because of the Kundalini awakening within me. But a lot of it is also because when emotions come up, instead of repressing them, instead of pushing them down, I allow them to come up. I feel them for as long as they need to be felt so that they can be processed. And then I release them. Then I hand them over. I'll do a whole video on emotional releasing and the process that I use to surrender each emotional state and really process these lower states of consciousness. But I do believe that there are a few reasons why I experience deep peace. A lot of it is just practice and meditate every day, pretty much no matter what is going on. And I have for years. So it only makes sense that I would feel more peaceful than ever, even when difficult things come up. I noticed that I actually lost quite a bit of weight because my dietary desires changed. I suddenly wanted to eat raw vegan. I am not raw vegan anymore at all. The biggest thing I noticed with my diet is I'm simply not attached to food as much anymore. I used to feel that I could only eat certain foods. I had to eat organic. I couldn't ever eat meat. Now my diet is much less extreme. I eat when I'm hungry. I don't eat when I'm not hungry. And I'm not as worried about what I put into my body because it doesn't feel like it has power over me as much as it did before. Having said that, I am very health conscious. I eat mostly whole organic foods. I don't feel like this Kundalini energy or spiritual energy is pushing me to eat any certain way. Sometimes I do notice though that if I don't eat or if I fast for a day, my meditations are deeper. I don't do this very often though because I have a very physical job, so I'm not really able to skip a lot of meals. But if I meditate before I eat anything in the morning, my meditation is deeper. So there's something to be said about fasting for spiritual reasons. I actually got pretty severe rashes on my face and on my wrists especially. Oh, I remember these rashes. They were the worst. I don't experience them at all anymore and I haven't for years. The brightening of colors and a sharpening of sounds and suddenly I could really taste food. It seemed like everything was heightened, like I was alive for the first time, like a newborn baby or something. This heightened sense of wonder and beautiful bright colors and sounds just being delicious. Yes, that still happens actually probably more often than it did then. I feel like at least once or twice a day, I am feeling just this awe in nature and awe in life. I look at people's faces and they seem angelic to me and I feel so much love for them. I'd say that this has evolved into a feeling of just being in heaven on earth pretty much all the time. So yeah, I'll take that. Ringing in their ears and sometimes even blurry vision. My ears don't really ring anymore. Occasionally they will, but I, I think it's because I was wearing headphones a lot and meditating a ton. So actually this, I'm not so sure, is a Kundalini symptom. I think it was more just that I was wearing headphones a lot and probably wasn't so great for my ears. A lot of people say that this is a symptom that they experience though. And I wouldn't rule it out if you are experiencing it. Honestly, you'll know if these are Kundalini symptoms. I don't know how to explain it, but I can tell when something is just a cold or something to do with my physical body and has nothing to do with Kundalini. And when it does, it has a different vibe to it. If any of you are experiencing Kundalini symptoms and you know that it's Kundalini and not a symptom of some kind of problem, I'd love to hear your take on that. You can comment in the description below. Ups and downs of physical energy. I don't really get these sudden rushes of energy or these ups and downs of physical energy. I feel very energetic 90% of the time. I have a very physical job. I'm moving and actually almost like working out pretty much all day. I'm an assistant stretcher, so I'm moving big, heavy bodies all day. And I work out, I climb mountains, I hike with my dogs. I am always moving and I almost never run out of energy. I never feel depleted. And I would say that this has a lot to do with the spiritual practices that I do and with this Kundalini energy 
moving in my body. What happens with your health and your energy is that when you are always focused on survival, like most people are, you are not able to repair the body. But when you meditate, you get into a state that is all about rest, digest, and heal. It's the parasympathetic nervous system that gets activated and is able to repair the body. So me feeling so energized probably isn't some mystical thing. It's probably more just that I'm always allowing that parasympathetic nervous system to take its time to repair me. I am not a stressed out person. So of course I have more energy. And also the Kundalini energy is life force energy and it moves me. Feel deeply spiritual and to want to engage in spiritual practice all the time. David Hawkins, the amazing spiritual teacher would say that once these spiritual practices have you, that pull toward deepening your meditation practice, deepening your connection, just gets stronger and stronger. And I would absolutely agree. There's this undeniable pull that I can't ignore to deepen my spiritual practice and just to make my life a spiritual practice. That is how this has evolved. The desire to be in meditation more and more frequently and for long periods of time is kind of always there. Unfortunately or fortunately, I live in the real world in the United States of America where I have to show up for work. I have children to feed. I have dogs that need me to spend money on them. So I need to make money. I need to provide for my family. So I can't hide away in a cave and meditate all day, but God, I wish I could. The desire is that strong and it doesn't leave you. It gets stronger. That has been my experience with everyone that I have talked to and definitely my personal experience. The way that it's evolved is now my life is my spiritual practice. I'm always trying to be more mindful. I'm trying to listen more. I'm trying to open my heart and unconditionally love whatever's in front of me. There's always some kind of connection that I'm trying to establish with spirit. I don't have a spirit spiritual life and a non-spiritual life anymore. It's one and the same. Heat and cold sensations that run throughout my body. It almost feels like suddenly somebody is pushing cold water through my veins or the opposite. I'll feel suddenly oof, like a wicked hot flash. This still occurs. I still experience rushes of heat and I experience icy cold, almost like breezes. It feels like a breeze that comes over my body. I wish I could tell you a scientific explanation to sound really cool, but I really don't know what this is about. I just know that it's very real. It happens to me. And when someone tells me and shares with me that this is happening to them, I can be pretty sure that it's a Kundalini awakening symptom, especially if they are doing lots of spiritual practices. Sensation of tingling and sometimes even burning up and down my spine. For me, I used to actually like be moving and I'd be going to take a bite of something and I'd get stuck. I'd actually be paralyzed for a moment because the prana was moving so strongly throughout my body. I went to all kinds of doctors thinking maybe it was MS or some kind of nerve problem and everything was ruled out and now I'm fine. The tingling and burning on the spine still does happen. Actually, if I am focusing on it right now, I can feel it. I can feel the tingling sensation, almost like electrical sensation moving up and down my spine. That hasn't really gone away, although it's not as noticeable. I don't experience burning in my spine anymore. I do experience the paralysis from time to time. What it feels like is prana engorging my body, engorging me so much so so that I can't move. I become stiff. I'll be doing something like going to take a bite of food and suddenly the prana is so strong that I can't move my hand toward my mouth. This is an intelligent energy, so it seems like it only happens when I'm alone and when I'm safe. It used to happen much more frequently. Now I'd say maybe once or twice a month, but years ago it was multiple times a day. It was a little worrisome for my family. I knew what it was, but because they didn't, I wanted to appease them and I went to all kinds of doctors. They never found anything and they still wouldn't find anything. And if if you're experiencing anything like this, please get checked out by a doctor just to rule it out. But it could absolutely be the prana moving very strongly in you. Reverse aging, radiant skin, and sometimes people's gray hair actually goes away. 
Do I look young and radiant? I just turned 45 years old and I feel amazing. I feel like I'm about 20. But again, the practice of regular meditation gets us into that parasympathetic nervous system state and allows our bodies to repair themselves, to rest, to digest our food, to get the nutrients that we need. And wrinkles and other signs of aging are scars and are things that can be healed and repaired. So if we tap into that healing state more often, it only makes sense that we would look more radiantly beautiful. So it's not mystical, it just makes sense. I have extremely vivid dreams, especially when my third eye is very active, which I can always tell when it is because I get a lot of sensation around my head and in between my eyebrows. I get a lot of tingling here and maybe even pain. My dreams are not as vivid as they once were. For a time, I was experiencing amazing things, past lives, geometrical patterns in front of my eyes that felt like they were downloading information. I would have visits from beings from other dimensions at night. Crazy stuff was going on, but that hasn't happened in a long time. And I think it's just because I don't need it. I've integrated what they've brought to me, the knowledge, the wisdom, the healing. I've integrated it all into my life. I simply don't need it as much anymore. Just cannot tolerate their life anymore. Suddenly they can't tolerate the job they've been in for 20 years. They don't want to be married to the person person they're married to anymore. They just want a divorce immediately. This is more true than ever. I cannot tolerate what isn't right for me anymore. If it isn't a yes, it's a no. And I can tell when it's a yes. It's very clear to me when something is right for me and when it's not. Now I don't even step into the same shit. That's how this has evolved. The Kundalini energy wants perfection because that's what you're capable of. It wants you to be a divine being and shine for all the world. And you can't do that if you hate your life. It wants you to live your yes. I just don't really have much interest in social activities. There's like no desire whatsoever in me to go out and party, to meet up with with a bunch of friends. I'm kind of withdrawn from the world and I like it that way. I'm very introspective. I like being alone a lot. I still don't like to socialize. I love being alone. I enjoy my own company even more. This has evolved though. Now when I'm with people, I truly love them. I'm much more present and I feel like I'm in the company of divine beings. I'm in love with people. Altered perceptions of time. Yeah, time is still very distorted, not only when I'm in meditation, but just in day-to-day -day life. In meditation, though, I notice it more than ever. Sometimes I'll close my eyes and it feels like I immediately open them, like no time has passed at all, maybe a minute. Other times I feel like years have passed. And this actually has to do with the structure of our brains. There's an actual part of the brain that keeps track of time that is sort of dulled when we meditate. Bursts of creativity. I couldn't even get anything out fast enough. I just needed to paint. I needed to write. I needed to draw. I needed to sing. Huge downloads of creativity. This was one of my favorite things about the Kundalini energy moving in me. And yes, I still experience it. It's different now because I don't paint, but I do create these YouTube videos and I do create meditations and thumbnails. And that's where I get creative. And sometimes an idea will come in the middle of the night and it won't leave me alone. And it feels like this fiery energy and I've got to get started on it right away. And I've got to follow up to completion. The bursts of creativity are still very real. Teachers and books and CDs and courses and all of this stuff appears exactly when you need it. All of these people start coming into your life to guide you along this path. And then just as quickly as they come in, they go out. Yes, 100%. The right teachers the right books, the right quote, the right information comes at exactly the right time. I'd say this has evolved in huge ways in that it's constant. I'll ask a brief question and I'll get the answer almost immediately. I'll wonder how to do something and the information will appear. I don't have to Google it. I don't have to search. And this is true not just for meditation and spiritual practices. It's true for everything that I want to learn. Life flows so much more easily now. And the things that I'm searching for, even if it's just subtle wondering or desiring, they come to me. They find me. The invisible higher dimensional beings, or sometimes I guess even lower dimensional beings, although I have zero experience with that. I've only experienced the higher dimensional beings. 
things. Ah, uh, if you would have asked me even a year ago about this, I would have thought that it was kind of, not ridiculous, but just um, something that was beyond the realm of anything that I would ever experience in my life. And then mm, I experienced some things and my mind was definitely blown. I've received even guidance from these beings. I don't get visits from interdimensional beings all that much anymore, but I'm not a skeptic anymore. And there was a period of time in my life where it was almost nightly that I would get visits from something or someone. I had an entire period of about six months where I would have conversations with what seemed like thousands of beings in my room. I do feel now that as we become more conscious, we become available to information that we were never able to perceive before. So yes, I believe that interdimensional beings exist and actually in an infinite universe that is ever expanding how could they not exist visions and different thing different signs in your life but for me i experienced a lot of visions and i continue to experience visions during meditation but sometimes even not during meditation just talking with somebody i'll just get a vision that pops into my head yes i still experience visions and psychic phenomenon intuitive hits it's kind of a part of daily life now the way that it's evolved is it's become the norm and it's a little more subtle i will experience some kind of vision or intuitive hit or I'll just have a knowing and I trust it now which is another way that it's evolved but it isn't such a shock to me anymore now it just feels like part of life and that's how I often get information I do think that people who are experiencing this Kundalini movement can sometimes have delusions where they think that they're experiencing visions and having psychic hits but they're actually way off the mark it's not quite accurate and this is what I believe to be a clearing away of blocks and stuck energy or whatever you want to call it just like we clear emotions it's the same thing desire to tell your truth to live your truth to live in integrity to be completely honest and transparent with others that is something that I still notice in my life it's essential for me to tell the truth it's essential for me to live my truth and definitely essential for me to be very transparent with other people yes I still very much feel like I am am only able to tell the truth and live in my truth. Lying feels scratchy on my skin. I'm so averse to living inauthentically or not telling the truth. And how this has evolved is very interesting. I feel completely accepting of myself. I feel like the old identity that had a self in here that was separate from other people and from life out there, that has faded away. I know longer feel that. I don't feel that separate self-identity. That makes it really easy to completely accept myself. So I am me all the time. If I do put on a mask, which happens very rarely, but on the occasion that it does happen where I am suddenly saying something that I don't really mean or doing something that isn't quite me, it feels so icky. I have to drop it. I have to let it go. I'm much more authentic and truthful than I've ever been. And that continues to deepen. Machinery, electronics, things break when you're around pretty skeptical about this one. I don't know if machinery breaks around me any more than it does for anyone else. So honestly, it's so hard for me to say whether this is something that happens or has evolved. I don't really know. Synchronicities and miracles happening in your life. This blew my mind, totally blew my mind. When I started noticing all the ways that everything in my life was lining up so perfectly and how in flow I was, my whole life became so easy and just the right people showed up at just the right time and I would want to go to this restaurant and usually you can't get parking and as I was pulling up somebody would pull out of a parking spot right in front of the restaurant. Synchronicities, flow, and miracles are my life now. I feel like everything is unfolding perfectly and I don't need to fix anything. And yet, at the same time, I'm making this YouTube video to add something to my YouTube channel. But this is also perfect. So even though I feel like everything is perfect and I feel like everything is completely synchronous and in flow and I don't need to do anything to change it, 
I still do stuff. The only difference is I feel like it's all perfect. Like my actions are flowing from something greater than me. I just allow life to happen and I trust. This has evolved into a deep, deep trust in the nature of things, in the unfolding of life. There's a deep peace in me that feels like perfect stillness pretty much all the time, even when I'm moving about my day. And that can never be anything but perfect. And yet I still act. Life flows through me. Life wants to be expressed as me. Knowing truth and seeing truth and my perception really, really shifted. It was pretty wild. So I would just suddenly see people very, very differently. Um, people who I felt were, you know, one way in my life, like they were really in love with their life. They seemed to have their act together and they seemed really responsible. Suddenly I noticed that actually they're not responsible at all. Actually, they're not happy at all. And I would just know these things. I would see the truth behind the mask that they were wearing. And even their physical appearance changed. I remember with one particular person, I really thought this person was like larger than life and I kind of looked up to him. And then I saw him and I was like, oh my God, he looks so small. Why does he look so small and kind of like, who is it, Schmeagle? Is that the guy's name from, um, from uh, Lord of the Rings, like that sort of shriveled up, pathetic looking guy. That's what he reminded me of, like really just emaciated almost. And he never looked like that to me before. I do have a deep knowing of truth, but the truth has shifted. I used to feel that I could see the true faces of people and those true faces would reveal to me that the person wasn't really as confident as I thought they were, or they were shinier and more radiant than I thought they were. Now that truth is that they're all divine. They're all perfect. I can see the mask that the person is wearing and it's almost like they're all pretending to be small. I can see the greatness in everyone that I meet. I'm so happy that it's evolved into that because I really feel this light in everyone and it's an easier way to live. It's a more joyful way to live. Oneness, joy, and bliss that goes beyond any words that you can speak. Really, truly deep, deep feelings of like this pleasure pleasurable oneness. Oneness and bliss in existence. I've discovered that there's a word for this or a phrase in Sanskrit called Sat Chit Ananda, blissful existence, bliss in life, basically. I feel this. I feel a bliss in existence and I definitely feel a oneness with all things. And that is not just an emotion. It's not just an, an emotional feeling. It's a feeling in my body. There's no me and then that out there. It doesn't feel like that at all. It feels like it's all one thing and it's all just happening spontaneously. And it's blissful. It's heavenly. It's definitely evolved in a huge way. That was like the ideal before. The ideal was I want to feel one with things. And mentally and emotionally, I do. I feel connected. But I don't even feel connected anymore. Now it's just life. All of it is life. I don't feel like there's skin that separates me from the outside world. It's almost like I have no skin this feeling of being on my purpose. I never knew what my purpose was before. I was always trying to figure it out and trying to find it. And now I just feel like I'm living it and it's so, so clear to me. This has changed immensely. This has evolved in a huge way. I don't feel like I'm living my purpose. I don't feel like I need to live my purpose and I don't feel like I'm not living my purpose. Purpose is something that doesn't even register on my radar, which is very interesting because from the outside, more than ever, I'm on a purpose. It seems like I'm kind of living a mission, but inwardly, it just feels like I'm being moved by spirit like I am in all other ways. I guess it's because I'm always on purpose. I am purpose. I am the purpose. The divine is flowing through me as it does through everyone and everything, and I'm just alive. I'm just being in it. Feeling close to animals and plants and maybe even feeling like you can talk to animals and plants. If I didn't know what was going on, I might check myself into a mental institution. Like it was very, very crazy. The trees were telling me that they were afraid because they were close to the 
to the road. So I, I really felt that they were scared and it was actually overwhelming. These gifts, they kind of come and go out of your life. I saw auras around people and I could see the way that they were energetically interacting with other people and with their environments. I don't talk to trees anymore, but I do see auras still. And the way that this has evolved is just a sense of energy within people and around them that gives me a clue into how they're feeling and how they're actually doing, what their true energy is, regardless of what they tell me. And I can see these auras sometimes, but I can also just kind of sense them. And I actually don't think this is unusual. I've talked to quite a few people who see auras as well or sense them. But these cities, S-I-D-D-H-I-S, they are not gifts to be used by you. They are the divine using you as a gift to the world. The divine sees that someone needs to be healed and uses your body to be a healer in that moment. And then maybe the divine wants to heal three other people through your body, through you. And so you do that. And then the gift goes away because it doesn't need you anymore. So it's really, really important that you don't seek for these gifts. Just be an open channel and allow them to use you. And then don't be attached. Be willing to let them go after they've served their purpose. Do I still experience cities? Not as much, no. I feel like the main city that I experience now is just unconditional love for whoever or whatever I'm with. And this actually is a gift because it allows me to accept them as they are and to be kind and that itself is healing. Manifestation happens so much more quickly when you are awakening and when you're awakened, it just happens almost instantly. It's like you barely even think the thought and the thing comes to you. And actually the crazy thing is as you go through this awakening process, you start to care less and less about the things you own, about getting the perfect relationship, the perfect job. It's almost like those things matter less and less and they come into your life easily. So you might have the passing thought of, it would be really cool to live near the water and then the perfect opportunity to live near the water just pops up out of nowhere. Yeah, I can still easily manifest whatever it is that I desire. It just doesn't feel as important to me. It's much more important to me to be free of desire and attachments than it is to actually achieve them or receive them. But there is this playful attitude that I have of, let's just see, let's just see if I can manifest this. And I might do some manifesting techniques like scripting or using a vision board or visualizing. And it works. It works miraculously well, faster than ever. And there's just always this feeling of gratitude. There's always a feeling of abundance. And I think that might be why things manifest to me very easily because I'm living in the vibration of gratitude and having more than enough. I am taken care of perfectly. So of course, perfection comes to me. Abundance comes to me because that's what I'm putting out into the world. That's my vibration and like attracts like. Dizziness and feelings of dissociation and floating and just weird sensations can happen quite a bit when you're undergoing this process. Sometimes it feels like the whole room is spinning. This is all normal. It's all energy moving around. Of course, if it becomes a problem, please go see a doctor. But something that used to happen to me was I would feel like champagne bubbles were like actually at the base of my spine and almost making me float. Floating, I would meditate and I would feel like I was flying. Dizziness, dissociation, and champagne bubbles are not my experience anymore. However, I do often feel this sensation of sort of like a balloon being inflated in my energy centers or my chakras, especially the second chakra right now at this current time, that's the energy that feels like it really wants to expand. And tomorrow it could be my third eye or my crown. I never really know what each day is going to bring, but that expansiveness and a feeling of lightness, that would be the sensation that is predominant right now. I don't feel dizzy ever. I just feel this kind of like I'm made of nothing, just air, a buoyancy and a bounciness is in me. 
And it feels amazing. It feels very freeing. Heart palpitations. This happens to me still all the time. Heart palpitations are still very real for me. They actually happen regularly. And I know that these are due to heart expansion because they always happen during meditation. So it's not a medical problem. I would say that I just become aware of heart expansion in the moment that I feel that flutteriness it doesn't scare me anymore. You can either feel really, really driven to find like a twin flame or a soulmate in your life. You can feel really, really desiring your other half, or you may not be interested in relationships at all. The same thing can happen for sexual desire. You may feel totally on fire and like you just want to have sex all the time, or you might not want to have sex at all. This is a funny one because I have to say that I was not desiring a relationship at all. I wasn't at all desiring sex, that's for sure. I honestly thought I was going to be a nun and live in a monastery and meditate all day, every day. That was my life path and I was totally happy with that. I was excited about it. And then I met my boyfriend in the middle of this kind of anti-relationship phase. But I'm totally, totally head over heels in love with this man. And it was completely unexpected. And as far as sex goes, I'll just say I'm very healthy in that area of my life. And I will say that there is this juggling act of hypersexuality where I really feel like, you know, and then the other side of that is the dip of not feeling anything, just totally numb to it, not wanting it at all. And this is normal. This is a life force energy that wants to move through you and it has created babies throughout all of time. So there you go. I created a workbook PDF designed to help you to deepen your daily spiritual practice for any goal that you set. So if you want to purify your system to allow this Kundalini energy to move in you, you can use the workbook for that. It's free. It includes super useful step-by-step -step instructions so that you can design a practice that will help you to wake up this life force energy. It's in the link in the description below. And of course, like, subscribe, and email me. I would love to hear from you. I would love to talk with you about whatever symptoms you're experiencing or any spiritual topic you want to talk about. Until next time, have an amazing life. Bye, guys.